you know, as a middle-aged woman, I get on social media sometimes to kind of give like my viewpoints and things I wish I had known 10, 15 years ago as a woman. But sometimes I have questions of my own. One of them is, what is the point of a girl's trip? I honestly do not understand it. Now, I know I'm a loner. I'm an introvert. I get that. I don't even have any friends. But <laughs> if I did, I still don't think I want to go on a trip with them. I like to be taken care of. I like stuff to be paid for for me. I got heels on, hold my hand, make sure I don't fall, open the door for me, pay for it for me, find me a chair while you go find us at a table, you know, whatever the case may be. Like y'all want to be passenger princesses, but you want to go out with all queens. How can I be a queen and be taken care of like a queen if I'm out with only other women? I need my man on my vacation. I, I thought part of the reason uh, or the benefit of a vacation is to engage in certain adult activities and in, in a new locale if you get what i'm saying i can't do that on no girl's trip so somebody please help me understand because girls trips were not a thing back in the day i'm 46 my mom ain't never went on no girls trip it just wasn't a thing so maybe i'm missing something so younger women can y'all chime in for me please all right so that was the the video right um Look at me being crazy, doing that wrong. That was a video of her basically saying it. And so when I started, you know, when I reviewed it, I was kind of pleasantly surprised because y'all all sent this to me. And y'all was like, Anton, you know, you need to check this out or whatever and react to it. And y'all know that I'm usually, I'm always trying to figure out what it is that I can react to or whatever. And, you know. She, the more that she spoke, the more sexy she became. So I said, listen, I got to get her on the platform. And I DM'd her and I got her in the background. <laughs> oh, my God. So, you know me, man. I don't really have any kind of, um, any kind of way in which I decided that the show was going to go on after hours, because this is much different than the Millionaire Morning Show and the Anton Daniels channel. So I'm about to bring her up here real quick. Let me see. What's up, Ebony? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is so crazy. I'm sitting here listening to the video, and it's like, it's, it, it don't even sound like it's me talking. I feel like it's somebody else talking when I watch it. But Why? Why? Why does it feel like it's somebody else talking? I don't know. Like I sing as well, right? And so, and I do. Yeah, podcasts. I seen that. I seen that. Yeah, a little bit, a little something. And hearing my voice played back, whether it's talking or singing, is always strange to me. So it's like, dang, that's me talking. Ooh, that's it. I started getting infatuated with you the more that you spoke. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I'm an equal accountability smoke giver, so I always, you know, hold people accountable, whether it's a guy or a girl. But then when you started speaking, I was like, wait a minute. Where you at? You in Atlanta? I'm in Atlanta. You know, there's no T's in the in the word of Atlanta. So it's it's Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> you was born I'm in the city. city. You was born you know, and raised in Atlanta? I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. Are you really? I'm from Saginaw, Sag Nasty. I've been here 15 years. I've been in the bluff that G oh, talked about for 15 God. years. I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. <laughs> now you gotta come back. I got to come back. Got to come back. I will. You got family in Saginaw? My whole family in Saginaw. My mother and father still there. I have one brother. I'm the oldest of four. So my little sister is here with me. I'm on the west side of Atlanta. She's on the east side. My other brother is in the Air Force. He's out west. And then my one brother is still in Michigan. So Why'd you move to Atlanta? Um, I was a flight attendant and my aunt was living in McDonough, which is south of the city of Atlanta. And when I stopped flying, she was like, come down to the A, come down to the A. Yeah. And it was 2008 and it was during the whole recession. And I was looking at the houses and I was like, you can get a house in the city downtown essentially for really, really cheap. So I'm going to come down to the A and make a good financial investment and buy me a house yeah. in the city before everybody come in and gentrify it and displace us. And that's yeah. what I did. That's how I that's got here. So you made this video that asked, what's the point of a girl's trip? I did. I did. Um, to me, the video was very benign. It was not incendiary. I didn't feel like it was inflammatory because I've posted some things. I've since deleted them. 
But I posted some things that were much more, again, inflammatory than that. That when I was just asking, like, you know, I'm genuinely confused, authentically confused. Can y'all let me know? Because I don't really get it. Yeah. Um, but people thought I was being fake and I was dead serious. I didn't get it. You got all of the smoke from women, though. Baby, smoke? Baby, I'm crucified. I'm dead. Why? I ain't why? why do you? So, you did you get any nasty feedback from guys, or was it all from women? There was a couple from guys, and I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't, yeah, click on their profile. I love profiling people. I ain't gonna lie. So yeah. I wasn't able to like click on their profile and kind of see what kind of men they were, but. There were a couple of men that got gave me smoke, but 98% of the men, of course, as you would imagine, because it sounds very traditionalist for a woman to be like me, they was all for it. Yeah. Um, so it was mostly, but the women were like, went in. Yeah. And I'm very sure. Was you expecting for that to happen? No, not at all. Because I, yeah, I said things that were more, I guess you would say offensive than that. And I was genuinely just asking for their opinions, but I posted a later video a little bit today. I, I think the women were really offended, not about the girl's trip angle. It was more so the girl's trip, the way that I expressed my opinion about it was the mm -hmm. vehicle to me, my traditionalist views. So I think the women were really railing against me being such a tradi traditional woman and you know, we ain't about that no more. It's all about feminism. And the opposite of feminism is traditionalism. Yeah. And I'm just a traditional woman. So I think what they were actually offended by was the traditionalism. When, when the last time you've been back to Michigan? Christmas. I go every Christmas. My mother passed four. She ain't, no, no. You got to come you, home. You wanna, you, um, so you still travel a lot? Because I know you used to be a flight attendant. We're going to get into that in a minute. We'll get into it. Okay. Um, no. So I was a flight attendant from 2000 to 2008. And I haven't flown a lot since then. But during that time, obviously, people say solo travel, you can solo travel, you ain't got to go with your man. Well, flight attendants, that's all we do is solo travel, you're on your own itinerary. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, no, nope, haven't traveled much since then. All right, we're gonna get into that in a minute. So now, all right, so you didn't expect for the women to come after you. And then they no. came, and then they came after you. What's your what's your thoughts now? Well, when I when I first made the post again, I thought it was quite benign, and I said in the caption, I have my theories on why girls go on um, girls trips, but I'll let y'all go first, right? Yeah. And so I realized today that I never went back and told what my theories were because I was really gingerly when i just said i don't understand what the point of it is y'all let me know that they took that can i cuss on here they you took can that, whatever you want you can say whatever you want on this they took that shit and was completely up in arms mm -hmm. and i don't like to inflame a situation so i was like oh shoot let me let me pull back but then i realized today i never went back and gave my theories and um what's your theory <sighs> Tell me what your theories are. You're really trying to get me crucified now, huh? Well, listen, this is the, this, <laughs> I know you're not familiar with what it is that I do, but uh, I, I stay in the crucifixion uh, camp. I love it. So, I've, I've done my research. I love it. I have why you, what you doing research on me for? Your research? I, look, I love your topics. I love the tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to be a part of some other conversations because I got a lot in my head. I got to get out. Oh, I promise you, I can. Well, listen, <laughs> you said you like to fly, right? I do. Yeah, I do. I need to see you in person, though. I'm coming to the D. I'm coming. You coming? I'm coming. That's I'm gonna it. make, but I'm gonna make sure I take care of you, though. Well, you know what I, how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, I got everybody you. knows how I feel about that, right? Tell me how. Tell um, us what. Tell us what you feel about that. My theories. Okay, so I feel like there is a, and this was the camp of women that I was more so because I did have a condescending tone in my in my original post, <laughs> and I am familiar with, and I do employ the finer nuances of communication. So I know exactly how I came off. It was intentional. 
So that camp of women that that um, the kind of the condescending condescending tone was directed towards was the camp of women that I feel like they're at home and they got this situation shit with this man and it's not going the way they want. He won't commit. He won't settle down. You know, he ain't mm -hmm. giving them what they want, but they can't leave him alone. Mm -hmm. So they're like, well, let me go on my girl's trip. So they on a girl's trip. And they got their coordinating swimwear and their matching lingerie and they white outfits for their birthday dinners. Baby, you hear me? And they on live all day waiting for that one particular man to view that story. I feel like a lot of these girls' trips are literally all about showcasing that you moving on and you living life yeah. to a single one man that's back at home because you lonely. I really do feel like that. And then there's another camp of women that I feel like are just running away from whatever situation they got at home. Mm. And that is a very, very unpopular um, <laughs> opinion. But there, do, I said it. Do you think that girl, do you think that girls trips, it's, it's a lot of theories, right? Because obviously I went through your comments too. And it was a lot of women that was in a lot of camps that was saying, Oh, you don't want to be interdependent on no man in order to take a trip and all of this stuff, right? It was on that on that tip. And then I was reading through my comments when I reacted to your video, and a lot of guys say that girls' trips really is just an excuse for women to go out there and fuck around. Do you think that that's that? Now, you know what? I was talking to my sister before I even posted the, the initial post. And I was like, girls trip, man. It just sounds like some, I ain't gonna say, I mean, it just sounds like some 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 kind of lesbian stuff. She was like, no, nah, I don't see that. <laughs> so then that took my mind, it took my mind away from the sexual slant, mm -hmm. right? But the comments, I didn't consider the sexual thing. Really? But that was I didn't, except for a little bit of lesbianism, maybe, but the fact that the theory that they're saying women are going and like just Get buck wild like that? Mm -hmm. No, I did not consider. I am that. so surprised that you didn't consider that. I ain't never been on no girls' trip, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I let didn't... me let me let me rewind then, because um, as a as a as a former flight attendant, um, what have you like? What is the the general sentiment of what their life is, right? Because I'm, I'm assuming. Well, first of all, I'm seeing. I'm going to just be for real. I'm seeing a lot of gay guys. Yeah. That's flight attendants now, which I didn't see a while ago. Like that wasn't as prevalent as it is now. But, you know, when I jump on a plane now, it seemed like every other flight attendant is a guy that's a little zesty. Right. Um, what is the lifestyle of a flight attendant in general? If you had to like. So first of all, I'm sorry. Yeah. First of all, all the men are gay. That's. 98%, huh? 99%. Yeah, they're all gay. <laughs> 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 so a lot of things about flight attendants, I found not to be true. So there was this, you know, people seem to think that flight attendants, before I started flying, I heard flight attendants, stupid, they dumb. First of all, that is not true. Flight attendants are highly intelligent, uh -huh. highly socially and emotionally intelligent. Like, it's, it's crazy. Um, second of all, Flight attendants do not like pilots like that. Really? <laughs> that ain't true. I was a flight attendant for eight and a half years, never got anywhere near a pilot. Um, huh. And third of all, I traveled all over the world. So I was I was with United based in Chicago, which is their, you know, their biggest um, uh, hub. Yeah. Yeah. I went everywhere, but I was what you call a slam clicker. So what that means okay. is you hear the hotel door slam and then you hear that little doop. That little click. I was a slam clicker because I just went in the room and whatever, by myself. But yeah. I've always been like this. I've always been like introverted, quiet to myself, and a loner, even yeah. as a flight attendant. That's <laughs> that was. My life. What is what is the other flight attendants' life's like then? Like, do they like to, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Kind of hang out more and do they party a little bit more? Or are they more introverted? What do you like? What do you think that flight attendants? general sense or is it more like the younger people are more like that but the older people are a little bit more professional what is your sentiment of the lifestyle of a flight attendant outside of you specifically yeah i think the lifestyle of a flight attendant is just like people think like they get to go out they're staying at these hotels these first of all they have a we have a union right yeah. well 
United does. We tried to get Delta to get our to join our union, but they they didn't uh, vote for it. But we had a union, so the union goes out and finds these awesome hotels. It has to be in a certain area and has to have a certain number of stars. And so they get out. They see the world. They as soon as they go upstairs, they say, 15 minutes, we're meeting downstairs at the bar. They go to the bar and we're in these places and we're in Brazil and we see these live sex shows. And then, really? you know, we, yes. And you don't pay for it. It's a single occupancy. Flight attendants do not share rooms at all. Mm. So you got your nice hotel room in a beautiful location and you get to see the same things that everybody who paid to go there gets to see. Um. So if you want to get out and see it, it's there. And I did, in spite of my um, loner personality, you're going to be dragged out at some point. So mm -hmm. we happened at one point, I happened to be in New Orleans one day, one year and it was like, oh my God, what is going on? There's so many people here. And the driver was like, it's the Essence Festival. I was like, oh my God, it is. Mm -hmm. Baby, them white flight attendants drove, dragged me out that night. We stayed out all night. So I'm really? at the Essence Festival didn't pay for it, hanging out with these white flight attendants all night. We go back to the room, change into our uniforms, 15 minutes, go to the airport. So yeah, that's that's a flight attendant. Like they be out. Do, do people, um, well, I'm not gonna talk about the guy flight attendants because if most of them is gay, then that really doesn't matter. All right, so let me flip it then. Should guys date flight attendants? Yeah, yes, for sure. I think flight attendants are guys are deathly afraid of the access that a flight attendant might have though. Well, yeah, there is some access, <laughs> but <laughs> with the age of social media and this world that we live in, I mean, access is access. Everybody got access, you know? Um, yeah. I think flight attendants are, like I said, exponentially intelligent. We're urbane. We're world traveled. We're sophisticated. I like to think <laughs> polished. Um, we're very grounded. We have a perspective, not impressed by everything because you've seen a lot. Yeah. So you don't want a woman that's impressed by everything. Right. So what about, um, pilots? Like what are their lifestyles? Like, is that crazy? <sighs> pilots have a reputation. Uh, I guess flight attendants kind of do too, but yeah. Um, I think pilots are different. A man with that type of, and oh, here I go, dividing the lines. But a, <laughs> No, a I mean, it's real. With, it's real. A man with that type of access? Ugh, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can trust it. That's too much. You wouldn't date a, uh, a pilot ever? You would okay. Let me rephrase it. Let me rephrase it. Would you trust a pilot? I don't really trust. No, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm single right now. I just, I didn't see anybody else. I've I've seen too much. You know, I've, I've seen too much. Well, you live in I've Atlanta too, much. so that ain't good either. It is not. Oh, Atlanta is bad. What you know about Atlanta? I didn't travel a lot. I mean, you know, I, mm -hmm. because I mean, you know, for what I do and content creation and stuff like that, which is not necessarily the main thing. Well, it's the main thing that I do now. But in a general sense, you know, I, I go city to city, state to state. Um, I'm starting to do a little bit more international travel now that my um, daughter is older. But um, in a general sense, you know, Atlanta's wild, man. I don't, I don't know what, I don't even know why. I don't, okay, let me rephrase this. If you're not down there for a specific reason, if you're down there to date, especially past a certain age, I'm not really sure what you're doing in Atlanta. Maybe you ain't coming here to date. You ain't coming here to find no mate. That is out of the question. Do you want to get married? Um, again, I've been married. Do you want to get married though? Again. Considering that you already experienced what that was like. I will say that um, I don't have an agenda for sure. Like I have a child, I have an eight-year-old son. Uh -huh. I've been married before. So for me, I don't have an agenda. Like I don't have a, ooh, 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 my biological clock, I got to have a child. My The time is clicking away, I got to get married. Yeah. So, so the agenda is off the table, which makes dating for me so pleasurable, to be honest, because there's nothing that I'm, shooting for you know you too you're too cute to get married at this point out to who 
You're too cute. To get married? Yeah, because your, your, your teeth is too pretty. Your skin is too nice. You speak Thank too you. intelligently. I can't, I can't see it now. Thank you. I feel you. I appreciate you. I really appreciate that. I don't know. Do I want to get married? Sure. Do I want to? I don't know. Do I want to try one of these new electric cars? I mean, sure. But I mean, I don't know. Like it's it's not something that's top of the top top of my mind. It's just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you meet guys that then say that that's what they're looking for, or do you meet guys that say, you know what, I'm just chilling, and whatever happens, happens? It's funny you say that. Um, I'm 46 now, and maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I'm not giving you no more compliments either. He said I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I'm 10, not giving you no more. <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, it was really hard to find um, a man who wanted to you know, be with me, take me seriously, commit, get married, and all that at a time when I really was looking for it. Yeah. Now, uh -uh. Nobody tells me we'll date and see where it's going. No, you don't say that. Really? And I'm like, no, they just want to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> why you not? Why you say no? Why you not getting married? Cause I don't know. I'm looking for something quite special, and if I don't find it, I just what? What you like looking this. for? What's what's what you looking for that's so special? <sighs> Well, I'm a tr I'm a traditional woman, and I'm looking for a traditional marriage. Not no more. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> no, because I mean, you in Atlanta, and it's 2024. You're right. I don't know. Right. I don't even know what tradition looked like anymore in Atlanta in 2024. Oh, I don't even know what dating looks like in Atlanta. Atlanta dating is, I had you know th this this. This content creation is extreme. It's, it's new to me, right? And I have all these things in my head, but I try to fit it into a 90 second video on Instagram, a 90 yeah. second reel. So I literally will take notes and I'll be like, okay, I got to try to condense this down and make it very succinct. So I've literally written some notes I like about that word. I like that word. Succinct, love it. Well, you know how to communicate me. effectively. I like that. Effectively, yes, I try to. Thank you. <laughs> so I literally have written like some notes of um, why I think dating in Atlanta, it, it is different. It is different and why it's different. And I think it's a combination of, um, first of all, this is like a Hollywood type of place, right? You know, any place that has industry like that, it's just going to be a different vibe. First yeah. and foremost, it's going to be a different vibe. And then second. Second of all, you have a lot of Atlanta culture that is exported out to the rest of the country and the world. So people think they know Atlanta before they even come here. Third of all, you got a lot of people that come here to visit Atlanta and they're in Midtown and they're downtown and they're feeling the vibe and they're thinking it's going to be like that when they move here. Mm. It's not, but mm. that's a different story. And then uh, fourth of all, it's a, a lot of people that come to Atlanta have made it, quote unquote, or they've risen to the top of whatever obscure city they may be from, right? And they're like, well, no, I done made it. I'm all just, they feeling themselves, right? They coming to the A. They bringing their talents to the A. Yeah. And so <laughs> because of those reasons and others that I may, can't think of at the moment, it just creates this, this ecosystem in Atlanta that is quite unique. And so everybody comes here thinking they the shit, they the cream of the crop, nobody. And so because of the culture that's been exported, you think it's stars walking around everywhere you go, right? It's millionaires, it's this, this, and that. And yeah. because you think you're the shit, you think you're going to come down here and get one of them people. Yeah. Nobody wants a regular person. Like everybody wants an Instagram girl or reality star. Even the men down here don't want to date no regular girl. And the women definitely don't want to date no man if he ain't no millionaire. So really? it's like everybody, it's everybody, no, everybody, everybody. No, everybody wants a superstar because everybody thinks they're a superstar. In Atlanta. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it's bad. No, it's bad. I think you it know? might be worse in uh in Miami. I could see that. Yeah, I think it's worse because I spent a lot of time in Miami just from a weather perspective, right? Just because, you know, it's nicer down there when it gets colder yeah. outside. Um I think that it's more like that. 
it's it's ten times worse in Miami, and then I think that Houston is is becoming very similar to Atlanta. I heard about Houston. I have heard about Houston. <laughs> you ain't missing nothing. You ain't, I ain't missing nothing. I ain't been there since I was a flight attendant. So, yeah. so you just stay buried down. Hmm. You just stay buried in in your little bubble. Huh? What time is it right now? It's eleven o'clock. Child. Yeah, when I, I when I DM'd you, I'm like, come on, you like, I don't even be up past a certain time and all of this. Ten thirty. <laughs> My little brother and his uh, his wife called me at. I was taking a little power nap at ten o'clock. <laughs> it was past my bedtime they called woke me up i said girl i'm trying to take a little nap they said no nah, it's time for you to get up get ready for your live i said okay i guess so i just be um i'm very involved in the community in atlanta so i see i, I live look at your yeah, in his profile i see i did yes. a research on you too no research appreciate you yeah i so say a flight attendant hook up and everything yes yes so I came down here and just thought, you know, I'm buying a house. It's a good financial investment. And little did I know I'm moving into a um, historic black neighborhood in the west side of Atlanta, just mm -hmm. just west of downtown at a certain time within this neighborhood's history and with all this gentrification and displacement. And I just got just got into the just into it, just wrapped up into it. So I bought my house. I have a uh, nonprofit that's paying my taxes for me, my tax increase. And honestly, I could pay. My yes, they have programs like that, and I could pay my cat my house off cash if I needed to. So there is no scenario where I would lose my house. But it's not about me. Yeah, I started to see that other people were being displaced and being moved out because certain people decided they wanted to come back to the city. And so I just kind of got wrapped into that. But um, yeah, so I'm involved with the community and my son, his school. You know, he he's APS and. That's my life. That's my whole life. They they say they want to know your name. I just dropped your uh, Instagram. It's Ebony. Her name is Ebony. Yep, yep, Ebony MD Ford on Instagram. So hold on. So all right, tell them what you do in a general sense before we go any further. Okay, like my. I know my I got to go past your bedtime. No, I don't want to. But see, you got to realize that this so is this grows right. It's already over seven. <laughs> that's watching is uh, right away right so yeah it, it get like that i'm just gonna tell you and the stuff be going viral and all of that right so yeah. I, don't, I don't want people looking up your day job and all of that but right. in general sense kind of give them an idea of who you are and what you do who okay who i am so i have um i have a lot I pride myself on my intelligence. So a lot of people, you know, and we being real, you know, 11 o'clock at night, we being real. Um, people see me and they may think a certain thing about me. Oh, she's attractive or she's cute or whatever that you see physically. But yeah. that is never anything that I've had to lead with because I've always been smart. But I wasn't cute till I was about 17, 18 years old. So all the way up into that part, my intelligence was what kind of got me through life. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of people do see the way I present and they kind of focus on that. But then when I open my mouth and I talk and I think people realize I'm intelligent, they're like, ooh, where'd that come from? Well, no, that that that's that's paramount. That was primary. Yeah. Um, so I I I I f I'm a very intelligent person. Um, I have a lot going on in my head, and I think that's part of the reason I'm a loner. Mm. Is because literally, what's going on in my head is more interesting than a lot of stuff that's going on out there. Yeah. And um, I just stay in my head a lot, and I'm very quiet, and I kind of just pay attention and listen. And I think people think I don't have a voice, but I think people talk too much. Mm -hmm. And they don't be saying nothing anyway, so yeah. shut up. So I'm, I'm quiet. I'm reflective. I stay in my head a lot. I I, I, li I think I'm a good listener. I'm very intelligent. And what I, I've started doing these reels and these videos because it's just so much in my head. And I don't have any other vehicle to get it out. So for me, I'm just getting it out before I, my brain explodes. And here's this video that just takes off and in a direction that I never could have imagined it going. 
And I feel like people want to hear more. And I'm like, well, I got more for you because it's a lot up here. And um, I don't know if I'm going to be using my intel. Like I could, I went to school for finance, right? And statistics. Yeah. Yeah. I build websites. I know how to code. You know, I'm a strategist. I, in my mind, I have a lot going on, but I'm like, am I using my intelligence to, to talk to people on the internet? It's just kind of crazy that it seems like my life is kind of going in that direction at this point. But yeah, I'm just a girl, I'm a nerd. And I don't think people know that because I'm not socially awkward. I'm socially astute. And now, I you do know present. that with all of this stuff that you're saying, you're going to get a lot of people that be reached. I'm just telling you, you're going to get people that reach out to you. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, but I'm 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 gonna be honest with you. I'm selfish, so I almost mm -hmm. feel like I need you to myself. But I know I can have you to myself because you know what I'm saying. You meant to fly, so I got to figure out how to unlock you more. I got, but I still need you. I need you on my. T I need you around me. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do it. I'm ready to come back home anyway. I got to come back home. All right. Don't don't tell me that because see, listen, I'm a, I'm a doer. So I don't, I don't mess around. Not just a talker, huh? You do? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to come back home. But we're going to treat you like a queen. I'm going to show you what you really, uh, I don't know what they do over there in Atlanta, but uh, over here, we're going to treat you like a queen. We're going to make sure that you're uh, well accommodated and taken care of. I love it. I'm just a nerd. I'm just a nerd and I'm ready to fly. That's it. Really? All right. <laughs> All right, I like that. So let me ask you a couple more questions, and then I'm gonna let you get to bed because I don't want to. See, listen, we we be up over here, so y'all be up. We like, be up. hello. Like, we don't we don't have no limit. <laughs> we just we, we don't have limits over here. We just make sure that we, you know what I'm saying, have a good time. Mm -hmm. Whenever it ends, it ends. You know what I'm saying? So hey, whatever y'all want, y'all got me now. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, bet. So let me ask you a couple more questions. Um, and you don't have to, I'm just, you know, I don't ever have pre planned questions, so I just come up with it as you talk. Um, and you don't have to answer this if you want to. Why did you get divorced? Like, how, how did you, how did he let you get out of there? So, what had happened was, <laughs> so I was working at Linux. I was working at the Chanel counter mm -hmm. um, and um, he came in. Now he was, he was Nigerian. So that'll probably tell y'all why I got divorced right there. You know, they crazy. What's that I, chick's I, name that just, what's her name? Portia or something. She was married to a Nigerian or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So he came in there, swept me off my feet. I had my reservations. But I was 36 and I'm like, you know what, eh, it might not last, but I, I, he, he's, he, and he's really coming for me. Like I need men to pursue me. I don't have time for the, yeah, no, you're going to come for me. And so he did. <clears throat> um, and so I let it go. I let it happen. And we end up married and all of that. And he was so controlling. The Nigerian guy? Okay. Of course, right? But I thought I could handle it because I'm a homebody. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to go on no girls' trips, right? So I don't need, I'm good being at home, making biscuits and pasta from scratch. I'm good. <clears throat> but he was too far gone with the controlling. And so mm -hmm. I just, um, no drama, no loud fighting and arguing and cursing and all that. And we just, we broke up. What do you think is the difference? Here's my other question. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the difference between uh, the average American man and a Nigerian man? If you had to give your thoughts on that. I think all men want their woman at home. Nah, just, not men. No? No, because I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to prevent you... Now, I am selfish. I will say that, right? Because I'm territorial. But okay. I'm not. I'm not selfish in a way that like, I'm not trying to hold you down. I'm trying to unlock you, right? I'm trying to look for your potential. I'm trying to understand where your talent lies and how it is that you can, we can utilize your talent to really bring back more because the best version of you is the best version of us. You know what I'm saying? So anybody can lock down a chick. Anybody can try to prevent her from going outside. But at the same time, I got confidence in, in you that you may not even understand in yourself. My job 
similar to a to, to an executive is not to figure out where to put you in a box, but to figure out where you fit so that you can be the most successful within a company. And I think that even when it comes to relationships or and when I say relationships, I'm not just talking about sexual. Right. Because mm-hmm. the attraction or the sexual stuff that comes with it. Anybody can do that. But it's our ability to be able to control ourselves that then get the most out of us. Because at any point we can get attracted to each other, but it, but it's it's our ability to operate within our discipline to really unlock you. But let me get, let me get back to what I was saying. Um, even in a relationship, the minute that I show confidence in you, you know, I need to understand you. I want to learn you. I want to know where it is that I can put you in a position to succeed. So that's my job. My job as a man is to really put you in that position. And so I, I'm always looking to understand you. That's why I ask so many questions. Um, and I want to, and, and, and part of the reason why, you know, I want you to be well accommodated is because I think that that releases all of the pressure to focus on anything outside of anything, but the, per, but the reason that you're there, which is me, you know what I'm saying? So I want you to focus on me. So I want to remove all of the barriers of entry um, yes. so that you, so that you can be more focused on the thing that we really trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So yes. when, when you up under me or when you're around me. You're going to be in the best, but I'm also expecting to put you in a position to perform. And I know that you can because I got I got confidence in you or else I wouldn't even you know, I wouldn't even deal with you in the first place. I see what you're saying. So you do you are selfish, you're territorial, but you're you want the woman to remove the barrier so she can shine. Yeah. And I said very good points. And I think a Nigerian you're saying like question being the difference. They don't want well, the one I had. didn't want me to shine literally just wanted me at home i mean you talk about being up under he and i'll give him that he didn't just want me at home he was like i'm not going nowhere without you and my son mm. we you not going nowhere. so he was at least even and i'll give him that he's like no i'm not going nowhere without y'all y'all coming with me you coming with me you coming with me but i'm like ah, you are wearing this relationship out we we've been together enough time for 30 years and it's only been a year you're gonna have to chill out or we're not gonna make it so yeah yeah. he was different in the sense he just wanted he had to be able to see whatever i was doing at all times and if that meant he couldn't do nothing either he didn't mind but well if i'm focused on you then how can you be focused like i need to be focused on the things that help you not the things that control you i don't why why would anybody want to control you I don't know. Let me, let, me, let me tell you what I see. Let me tell you what I see. And this is kind of honestly, this is what I look at even from a professional perspective. Why would God give you that pretty skin? Why would he give you those pretty teeth? Why would he give you all of the talent that you have to not be able to utilize it effectively? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even think it's for me. Like, if, if I'm looking at you or you work for me or anything like that, I don't think that's that's for me. I think that that's for them because... I see you differently than they see you, right? I'm supposed to see you as an asset. So I'm looking at the things that's meaningful in here. You know, I think that the beauty is what shines outside, but then the outward appearance is the thing that you use to rope things in that ultimately can become an asset for both of us. You know what I'm saying? So I don't understand the whole controlling thing. I've never believed in that. And I think that I think that you deserve better than that. Well, I so appreciate you. And and a man shouldn't try to control. Oh, I'm sorry. No one should try to control anyone. But like me, I don't even think he understood how calm I was, like how it certainly wasn't necessary with me. All I wanted was to be with my family. I mean, Mm. the the Internet now knows me more than my own husband did because y'all like she just want to be able to man. He didn't even realize that. Like, dog, I ain't going nowhere to do nothing. Right. I didn't do that when I was single. I, I'm, I've always been like this. I call myself boring just because I don't feel like explaining it. Because I think it's I want to know. I want to know more about what you say, what you're doing. I don't think you're boring. I think that that's what you're selling me. I'm not boring. It's just it, it's no way to. I can't. Well, anybody can see that you're not boring. Yeah, I'm not boring. I think I'm just. Um, I'm very, I'm a, I'm a simple person. I'm, I'm okay. No, not simple. Okay. 
I'm streamlined. Like I think life should be swimmingly. You should make life easy. I'm mm -hmm. all about efficiency and effectiveness and just, I don't complicate things. Mm. Half the stuff we complicate don't need to be complicated, man. Just, just relax, just chill, have a perspective in life. Like zoom out from the pettiness, just relax, take the stress off. Mm. And a lot of people don't operate like that. Y'all be wanting to complicate little stupid stuff, and I can't get with it. I can't get with it. I'm I agree not gonna. With you. So, I yeah, I don't think you're born. You're too intelligent to be born. No, no, no. Honestly, I'm I'm wondering because you you almost seem like the type of person that if you sit there at a bar with him or you just catch him at the right time, you can probably wind up having a three or four hour conversation if you got the capacity to. If you got the capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Um <clears throat> that's happened to me a few times. <laughs> I just um, you know, like I always say, perspective is my big thing. I'm teaching my eight year old that perspective, perspective perspective mm -hmm. it will help you see things in, in in a healthy way it will help you understand what's important and what's not it helps you pick your battles i wake up in the morning and i say oh my god it's so beautiful outside i don't care if it's raining sunny cloudy it doesn't matter it's beautiful outside because mm -hmm. i woke up and seen it that's it mm -hmm. and if you keep a healthy perspective like that everything looks good People be like, ooh, they cut me off in traffic, but did they hit you though? Yeah. Did you get into an accident? Did you have to file a claim on your insurance? Did your premiums go up? Was you stuck on the side of, I don't know, 75, 85 in Atlanta at the Grady Curve waiting on somebody to come pick you up in traffic? No, you were not. Yeah. So let them people cut you off and going on down the road like it's perspective. And I just think that's what, to me, that's what life is all about. But you know it's so funny? I didn't even expect to talk to you this long because I'm like, yo, I just want to get her thoughts on this. But you just organically smooth. You're organically. I like that. I like that. I don't want to keep you too long, though, because I know I hope I held you up past your bedtime. So I got to apologize for that. You're fine. You're fine. Perfectly fine. We're going to do it again, right? I'm waiting on you. You tell me. I'll okay. tell you. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. I'm going to reach out to you. Um. I'm going to send you my number tonight. Okay. I'm going to send you my personal number, and then we're going to figure it out. We're going to work it out. But I do want to okay. make sure that I get you into the city. But I'm going to wait till it get a little bit warmer because I want you to experience the city the way I want you to experience it. Woo! Yes. Okay. What are we getting there? Because it's about 74. Ooh, was it was 74 down here today. I know it's Atlanta, but. Yeah, it was, it was in the 70s today. But the thing about it was just that, you know, Michigan weather is bipolar. So I just want it to be a little bit more consistent. Okay. Okay. Well, let me know. Send me your contact. We're going to do it again. I've seen a lot of stuff on your page that I would love to come in on. So we're going to talk <laughs> in person right. or streaming, whatever live. We're going to do it. All right. Cool. Get some, get some All beauty right. rest. And then when you wake I up, will. I will. Thank you. I so appreciate you talking to you tonight. Now you take care. Okay. See I'll you see you soon. Bye. All right. Bye y'all.